Hello and welcome to this Infinite Runner Engine tutorial. I'm Renault from More Mountains and today I'm going to talk about input. Uh, input is the essential part of uh, most if not all games. Uh, usually you don't want a way whether it's by uh, touching a screen with your finger or pressing a key or using a gamepad. Uh, you want a way to move your character and uh, you know jump from platform to platform, validate stuff, choose a level and so on. Uh, the Infinite Runner engine comes with its own input solution. It's extremely simple by design. Um, as you know, most uh, Infinite Runner games only require one or two buttons. By default, it supports mobile touch, uh, so Android, iOS, stuff like that. And uh, it also supports keyboard and gamepad. Uh, but you can of course build on top of that to support more exotic uh, input systems as you can see uh, well as you will see uh, the system is really simple to extend so i'm gonna open uh, a level to uh, show you what i mean so uh, let's have a look at this one so in, in most level uh, you'll find here in uh, under uh, managers game object you'll find an input manager class um, that's really all you need in a scene uh, to have input working that's a class that will uh, and again this is really simple this is made uh, you know for pure e efficiency and uh, supports only a few things if you need more I suggest you have a look at uh, my other asset uh, called uh, nice touch uh, it's available on the asset store and it provides much more options uh, but i think for most infinite runner engine, uh, infinite runner games uh, this should be sufficient uh, this handles pose main action left right up and down in most cases that's that's all you need um, so this class uh, what it does is it looks for um, presses touches uh, events on these uh, key strings that you can find if you go into uh, edit project settings input here you've got unity's native uh, input manager where you'll find your axis so uh, you've got horizontal you've got uh, the main action so by default it's bound to space or uh, i think this is the a button on an xbox pad on windows uh, and then you've got left right up and down um, all of these are really all you need and so if we go back to uh, our class here our input manager uh, you can see that uh, when uh, for example the main action button so that's this one here when it gets uh, pressed down uh, it calls this method called main action button down and uh, main action button down as all these other uh, methods what it does is uh, it looks for uh, a control scheme, whether it's a single button or swipe. And uh, depending on the status of the game, it will do a bunch of stuff. Maybe it will, uh, you know, if we are in a game of a state, it will, uh, you know, trigger the game of our action of the level manager, well, stuff like that. But it's really edge cases. Uh, but it, in most situations, what it does, it just uh, goes over all the the current playable characters and it tells them that the main action uh, button has been pressed and in turn uh, if we go into the jumper class for example which is just an example of all the playable characters uh, you'll see that we have uh, it extends playable character and playable character is a class that is like the interface for all uh, possible playable characters because it has all these methods uh, somewhere here that you can override into your own um, uh, character class and have them do stuff when uh, for example the button left uh, starts being pressed or when it's released and so on so uh, back to our jumper class you'll see that uh, when the main action start is called via the input manager um, it calls the jump method and the jump method if it's possible performs a jump and which means adding force to uh, our character throwing it in the air and so on so uh, that that's really how the input manager works on mobile um, and 
depending on the selected uh, control scheme for the current level, uh, button groups will be activated uh, within the UI camera. So uh, to select uh, uh, an input type, uh, what you can do is go into uh, your level manager here, and uh, here you have a drop down for mobile control control scheme. So you have a choice between a single button, which means that on mobile the whole screen will be clickable, uh, touchable, and so every time you press it, uh, you start the main action start. If you keep pressing it, main action pressed. If you release uh, your touch, uh, it will make a main action up or whatever. Um, same for the swipe, you will have a big main action on top of everything and uh, you will be able to do a left, right, well, swipes. Uh, and then you have left, right, uh, which actually divides the screen between uh, two big zones and you can put press the left part of the screen for left, the right part for right. So if I press play, now I have selected left, right, I won't be able to jump, so this game is doomed. But um, if I go into uh, my UI camera here, you'll see that inside my canvas, I now have this left, right um, uh, game object, uh, or, or, you know, rect uh, transform activated, and it contains a left button and it contains a right button. Uh, both are invisible, but uh, the right button is uh, like this on the screen, and the left button is like this. Um, and so, uh, if I quickly press left or right, you can see that. Uh, well, maybe it was a bit fast, but uh, I'll just wait for a new platform to come up. Um, all right. So if I press left or right, as you can see, I can move my character. Um, so uh, that that's how mobile controls work. Uh, you don't have to do anything if you're fine with kind of these three choices here. Uh, not here, but in my level manager, which is somewhere. Uh, what did I do? Of my yeah here. Um, so if you're fine with uh, one of these three choices, uh, you don't have anything to do. Uh, if you want to dig deeper and create a new alternative mode, uh, you'll have to modify the input manager and you'll have to modify the UI camera uh, to add maybe more zones. Maybe you want three buttons. Maybe uh, you know it's really up to you. Um, that covers everything you have to know about input in the Infinite Runner engine. Uh, I think it's a really simple yet uh, efficient and uh, powerful system. Um, I hope you learned something today and I'll see you in the next tutorial. Bye!